Hello, I am Will. Um, this is Built From Scratch. This is a uh, daily-ish stream where we spend about an hour every day working on a video game using the Scratch programming language, and we do it all live. We do it all piece by piece, bit by bit, one hour at a time, live on camera, on stream, for you to see, uh, for you to throw in your two cents to um, and to follow along the build process. So we started a couple weeks ago with a completely blank scratch project and we are now um, in a situation where we have, we have a bunch of stuff you can do in our game. Um, in particular, oh geez, it looks like I forgot to share this one. Oh geez, what a bad, what a bad streamer. Um, what a bad, what a bad person. Uh, but here we are. Organizing lists of stars um, was our last project. I'm going to hop inside, and I guess I'm going to say this is episode 12. 12 of Built From Scratch. Um, we took most of last week off. I had a thing that I had to do that was a big thing, and it took all my time suddenly, and it came up, and I just had... I just, it, I just didn't have a choice. So, well, I had choices, but I made them, and that was the choice that I made, was to was to drop this for a little while. Um, but I am back. I am back and excited because we left last week in the middle of a big project, um, in the middle of a big major change to our code. So let's, before we jump in and start coding, um, let's just look at all of our various bits. We have a ship, we have a star, we have a camera, we have a planet, and we have an empty sprite one that we were using to draw diagrams. Um, and we have a diagram here. That's good. All that sounds reasonable. Um, if, oh, I don't need this diagram to be vi visible on the screen. That is not a thing we want. So, okay, so I'm going to hit the green flag and we can see some stuff happen. But in order to see it happen, I'm actually going to pull up some of these variable Variable monitors here. I'm gonna get my list of current stars, my list of planet distances, and I'm just gonna hit go. Oh, not current stars. Um, I want my list of star positions. Um, current stars is fine, mind you. But all right, and then what are we gonna do? Um, we have. I hit the green flag. And we get a whole new list of planet distances, we get a whole new list of star positions, and we get a whole new list of current stars. So when we hit the green flag, what we are doing is we are generating ourselves a universe. Um, but actually, in a, in a certain sense, we're not generating a universe. We are generating a bunch of numbers that can be used to construct a universe. We're basically generating a universe recipe that our game is going to refer to. It, it, it's, it's not a recipe, it's more like um, like a schematic or a diagram or something like that. It's, it's, a, it's a bunch of information that tells our program precisely how the universe should be put together. But because our universe is so very, 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 very big, all right, space is, space is big, space is so big, um, uh, because of that, we don't want to generate and simulate and run the whole space universe thing all at once at all times during our game because it would be incredibly slow. So instead, we have, we're have going to take a little tiny snapshots of our giant universe, a little snapshot, and we're going to simulate all the stuff that seem, that is happening in that little snapshot. And by... Um, and that sounds like a pretty grand and ambitious thing to do when I say it like that, when I say simulate all the stuff that is happening. But in fact, at the moment, our simulation, uh, which I am putting in the scariest of quotes, consists entirely of having stars and planets have positions in the universe and having the stars slowly move around the planets when you happen to be near them. So it is not much of a simulation. So when I say simulation, I'm being being quite generous. Um, but but even this very you know modest simulation, um, just putting the stars on the screen, well, we can't actually draw that many stars on the screen or keep track of that many stars uh, you know, in our memory at once. So we have to 
only be using we don't have to only we have to only be drawing and making and thinking about the stars that happen to be near the player's ship everything else in the gal in the galaxy disappears when the player isn't there that was what we were working on and it's not quite where we got last time um if you recall from like ages ago um if you were watching you might remember that we had got ourselves to a situation where we were only drawing the right number of stars and we could have a kind of infinitely large uh you know not actually infinitely but but a very very extremely large galaxy with lots of stars and we could fly around in it and keep track of all the stars and it was great but there was a problem and the problem was that it was making our game kind of jittery because we couldn't um you know keep track of all those stars at once it was using up uh, using up our computer's power to do so so then we decided we had to reorganize our stars so that we could easily <gasps> oof, excuse me um so that we could easily say hey i am a spaceship i am in this particular coordinate in the galaxy i'm at point 1200 galaxy units in the xy dimension in our galaxy i need a quick list of all of the stars that happen to be surrounding me um that happen to be geometrically close to where i am uh, because we want you know when our ship is in a spot we want to simulate all the stars near it and but not all these other ones right so what we said hopping back to this diagram here which i so carefully saved what we said is let's take the whole galaxy and divide it up into cold mm, i almost said quadrants but not quadrants sections sectors um and man look at that i started from zero here but i didn't start from zero there what a bad streamer um but we said uh let's divide it up into sections so that we can easily say if I happen to, I'm flying the ship around, I happen to be in section seven here, I'm going to need all the, all of the stars to be, we need to pay attention to all the stars in section one, two, three, eight, 13, 12, 11, six, and seven, all of these nine sections. Because if I happen to be here, like right here, and I fly into any one of these sections, I want to have already simulated them. I want to have, have them already in memory so that we don't have like a, a jitter um when we load them so we don't like have a or sorry i was gonna say so we don't have a jitter when we load them but that's not actually the reason the reason is because if i happen to be here on if the starship happens to be right in that corner on the screen the uh the screen will overlap all of these sections all of these sectors right so the screen will overlap all of these sectors so if we were only drawing ships uh if we were only drawing the stars in sector seven then we'd be in this weird situation where we could would have stars being drawn to the top left in the top left quarter of the screen but not in any of the other sections until we you know passed right over and then suddenly bloop, they'd all pop into being so that's not what we want that would be bad um it would not be be good it would be bad and so instead we said all right well we can't get away with just simulating this single sector we have to si simulate all the sectors that might be bordering it um and i was thinking that the, if we were like being super super savvy somehow we could maybe pay attention to where we were in the sector and only simulate the ones that were that were like adjacent in the direction that in the relevant direction then if you like turned around and went over here it would start simulating these um that not only do we does that sound like a little bit of work to me that i don't feel like doing which is a good enough reason for not doing it incidentally um, because we don't know that we need to it also is not even obviously an improvement because uh it's not obvious to me that the overhead of swapping back and forth that the difficulty of swapping back and forth for our computer is any lesser than the difficulty of just keeping track of all of them um and it's certainly certainly the difficulty of swapping back and forth is more work for me the programmer right now so if we don't need to do it let's not um so what we did then was something pretty clever i think we went into our star generator 
and we made it so that it generates our stars geometrically, that it generates our stars one section at a time. Hopping over here, so first, actually, ah, eh, it's hard to, hard to decide what order to say things, um, but let's shrink this. This is not, let's, let's give our code more stretch out, give our code more room to breathe. Um, so what we decided to do was, in this little section of code here, this little section of code called generate star data, where what we're going to do is we're going to take, oh, geez, I don't know if you can hear, there's a barking dog, there's a crying baby who is not currently enjoying being fed, and it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a noisy disaster out there, so that's okay. Um, everyone, everyone does their best, so if you hear, it's Shiloh barking in the background, so hi, Shiloh. Um, here we do define generate star data. Um, and what we're doing in this in this block of code here, in this function, is we are saying, let's take all of our stars and uh, all the, let's figure out how many stars we want. And for each star, make up, pick some random numbers to, to represent the properties of that star. So every star has a position, which it has an X and a Y, has a color, and it has a size. Now, probably in the long run, stars might have some other properties as well, like, um, you know, uh, age, say, um, temperature, uh, whether there's an alien civilization orbiting, things like that. Um, we might, so we might generate that in the, in this section as well. But for the moment, our stars are very, very simple. They have a color, a position, and a size. Uh, we store these in lists. Of course, every time we run the game, we want to generate a new set of data because, uh, the idea of this game is that it is, um, procedurally generated that we're going to get a new galaxy every time you hit go. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to repeat galaxy sector count Y, repeat galaxy sector count X, repeat stars per sector. What is this little trio of a loop doing? It's saying we are going to, for every uh, sector in the galaxy, we're going to, in so you know, the way, when, when you analyze what a loop is doing, or rather when you analyze what a nested loop is doing, you want to start, usually want to start on the inside, because that's what's happening most. That's what's happening over and over again. And so in this case, you can see there's just this third loop has all the code in it, and then the others are just repeating a certain number of times. So we can really easily see that what this loop is doing is doing a whole bunch of stuff, um, and then these other two loops are there to organize it in some way. So what are we doing? We're repeating stars per sector. So that means we are, uh, that, that implies that we're making stars. And indeed, that's what we're, we're doing. We are adding data, right? So these green things, this is a bunch of math. We can mostly ignore it. Um, it all says pick random and has a bunch of math attached. But basically it says, uh, adds some random positions to position X, position Y, color and size. So we're picking some random positions. Now the important thing, we can't actually ignore this math, even though I just said we could a second ago because I wasn't thinking a sentence ahead. We can't actually ignore this math because this math is doing something we are really, uh, that's really important to us. This math is saying we are going to, um, we, I'm not going to go into it. You could, you could look at this code and look at this loop and like, fill out in the numbers and do it in your head to verify that it's doing what, what we think. But it's picking a random number between zero. Well, it's picking a random number uh, that it's picking random numbers for the position such that when we go through the first time, all of the stars will be in this quadrant, in this sector. Whew, not a quadrant. Um, so that when we go through the second time, all of the stars will be in sector two. So we go through the third time, all the stars will be in sector three. So we go through the fourth time, all the stars will be in sector four. Um, so that means, uh, so if we go back to our star, there it is, go back to our code. Let's stretch out this list now so we can see it. We can say uh, what should be happening, stars per sector. I don't actually remember what it is. I think it's probably a hundred. Um, can I, can I get, I don't, how can I, where can I find that? I can just go up here probably and double click on it. Where are you stars per sector? There we go. 100. Yep. So we're getting 100 stars per sector. So that means our first hundred stars should all be within 
a certain range. Specifically, they should be in, um, well, we have a sector count, which is saying how many sectors we should have. And we have a galaxy size somewhere else. We have galaxy ooh, sector size. Um, oh, we, no, we have a sector size. We don't have a galaxy size. Yeah, so sector size is 1,000. So all of the, the way it works is that the first 100 stars should all be have their X positions between 0 and 1,000 and their Y positions between 0 and 1,000. And that will put them all in this first little sector. So we can go through and we can see, yep, that all seems true. Da, 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 da. Yep, and that seems good. And then, of course, we go to star 101, and it should know it should be different. It should have, it's going to be one sector over. And so it should have its X's between 1,000, which is this starting point, and 2,000. But its Y's should still be between 0 and 1,000. So our X's here, we can see they're all between 1 and 2,000. We could go ahead and pull up the Y's just to verify that we're not doing something too crazy. So we're, this is 1, right? So remember the first... All of these, all of these, for the first two hundred, for the first many hundred, actually, should all be less than a thousand, um, and it, they sure are. So that looks great. So this seems to be doing the thing we want it to do. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead, and hide all that stuff, get rid of this, and then think about what it is that we are doing next. I think what we did was. Um, I think we just did all that, but I think we didn't do anything about rendering this, these stars. So I think we're still rendering stars in a, you know, in a way that you can see, yep, we're still rendering stars in a way that makes things a little jittery. Um, so that's great. It's good. We still have a problem that there's all this work we're doing to solve a problem is not, um, is not pointless. Um, so things are still a little bit jittery and what we need to be doing, so we are probably not doing anything around how to render these stars correctly. So let's clean up here again and think about, let's look at what we're doing. Um, what we're doing is we're making a bunch of star clones. We generate the data. So here's this thing, the way that scratch works is that any sprite that exists or any clone that exists can be drawn on the screen. So when we want to draw something, when we want to draw a star, the first thing we do is we take all the data out of the list and we make a sprite, we make a star sprite, a clone of this original star with that data. And that will allow us to draw it at the right spot on the screen. So that's what this make star clones script it is doing. It's, it's a little bit, um, no, it, it, the way we use the word clone here is a little bit funny because really what we do, what, what the clones are doing, when we want to draw something to the screen, we have to make a clone for it. Um, so in a certain sense, making clones is, is the first step of rendering. But I don't know. We're doing the best we can with names. Um, so when do we pick which stars to... Uh, what, all right, so make star clones. So we're saying continually make all the clones that we should make. Um, and make star clones deletes uh, enter galaxy navigation mode if repeat until not in game mode make star clones. Repeat length of star sizes. Um, and it looks like we, we have a thing called current stars, which is the list of all the stars we currently have. We're currently drawing. Um, and we check we are we're just going through the list of every we're going through the list of every star in the galaxy and checking whether they're close enough to draw. Um, so that that of course just takes a lot of time because we have to look at uh, how many numbers? Ten thousand numbers, I think. We have to look at ten thousand numbers. Um, maybe more. Let's figure it out. Uh. We have to look at, yeah, 10,000, is that, is that, uh, uh, one, ten, hundred, thousand, ten thousand. We have to look at 10,000 numbers and compare them. We actually have to look at 20,000 numbers because we have to look at the, the X and the Y. 
we have to look at 20 other numbers and compare them to our positions and based on those comparisons we do something with this list so we want don't want to look at 20,000 numbers we want to only look at the numbers we care about so make star clones um, the first thing we can do is probably uh, just rewrite this a little bit so that instead of looking at the whole looking at the whole galaxy we are just always we're just always looking at the ones um, that that we care about so how do we do that let's see we don't want to repeat length i think we can just basically throw out all of this um except this part here this part here is helpful um this part here is helpful but this part here is not because we don't want to be doing any distance comparisons so what do we want to do we want to uh make all the clones for that are near that are in the uh, sector next to me so or where I am Blech. so where what does that mean how's that gonna work well um we need a good way to go from the position of the starship to the sector we are in so that's the first thing we're going to do um we're going to go want to go from the position of the starship to the sector that we are in and how are we going to do that well we know that sectors are 1000 long and so uh we know that sectors are 1000 long so we can figure out the first step is to uh figure out what our x and y are I guess right so if we are between 0 and 1000 we're in the 1 if we're between uh, 1000 and 2000 we're in the 2 etc so I guess let's we're, we're gonna do this in um let's have our player ship let's have our player ship calculate this stuff for us um so where is that we are in, I went to our player ship code here, and I'm just trying to find somewhere in our game. Uh, we do physics. What is physics? Physics is, I, I want to find when I receive galaxy, here it is. When I receive enter galaxy navigation mode. Um, I'm going to make another block, and I'm just going to call it calculate uh, current sector um it's gonna run without screen refresh it is not going to take any inputs um but we're just gonna hit okay we're gonna do it and the first thing we're gonna and we're gonna make some variables to store this information right if we're gonna calculate something we're gonna want to make some variables these are gonna be for this sprite only because there is only one player ship um and then other things can access it using the sensing block. And so we're going to call it current sector X. And we'll make another one called current sector Y. And we're going to make another one called current. Ooh, did I do that? I feel like I just did that last one for. Yeah, I did it. Look at that. I did. I caught myself. I want it to be a player ship only variable and I didn't I didn't make it a player ship only variable I made it a global variable we don't want that I'm gonna try again current sector Y for this sprite only and then finally we're gonna have a current sector number eee, I don't like it but so we're gonna call it um for this sprite only as well uh, actually I'm gonna put a number sign there okay um current sector that's the reason i did that was just so that they would all be the same length in this little in this little display here which i just thought would be kind of nice all right so calculate current sector easy peasy well not necessarily but we can probably do it so the first thing i want to do is calculate my x so i'm going to want a set x very a set a set i probably want another one for the y um so calculate current oop i want calculate 
sets. We're going to set current sector X to something. We're also going to set current sector Y to something. Um, and we have a universe position, right? Uh, a variable called universe X. This is where in the X dimension our ship currently is existing, right? It's universe X. We also have a universe Y. Um, we probably care about that too. And so we're going to want to do something with this. So looking here, we start at zero, we go to 1000. So I think what we can do, and that get, puts us in sector one. So I think what we can do is we can round, not round, um, but we can truncate. So if we just, right, if we're at like 700, what we want to do is divide by that 1000. Um, if we're at position 700, we want to divide by, divide by 1000, get 0.7, round that, da round that down or truncate that to zero, and then add one to it. Um, um, I think, yeah. I was, so, sorry, that was a little bit confusing. I was just trying to decide whether I want this to be called sector zero or sector one. And I'm not sure. I think I want it to be zero. I think I want it to be zero. So I'm gonna just fix this labeling, just just to be a little bit a little bit crazy. Um, a little bit crazy here. Uh, just trying to fix things. Alright, um, that, not 21, don't want 21, alright, don't want 21, but the reason, uh, I didn't, I didn't want to spend, I had resisted spending effort updating this diagram, but I think it is worth the effort because trying to remember that it's not the way that I say, trying to remember that the diagram doesn't agree with what I'm saying just sounds like the sort of thing that is going to be a problem. And I, I have a suspicion we're going to refer to this diagram at least one more time. So, um, all right. So sector zero, zero, right? There we are. Uh, we're at point zero. Um, so we're going to, we're, we're between position zero and 1000 and we are going to round around uh, divide by 1000. So let's say we're at position 700. We divide by 1000. We get point seven. We, uh, round that down to zero and we'll be in sector zero. So that is perfect. Um, so we're going to set current sector X. We're going to take our universe X. We're going to divide it by 1000 using the division sign. Oh, other way. And then we are going to use a thing called floor or ceiling. I think we're going to use floor. Um, uh, and let's just go ahead and see what our universe X is. Let's see what our universe X is right now. Our universe X is 5,000. So if we do this, we get five and that's great. Um, let's set it to be something different. Let's set it to be, let's set it to be 3,000, three, four, five, six. Let's see. Oh, let's actually set it. All right, three, four, five, six. So now this should give us a three and it does. So that's perfect. We're gonna set current sector X to that. We are going to do the same thing for current sector Y and we are going to clean up just a tiny bit. Okay. Um, and what floor does, floor is just a, a fancy math term for, um, Uh, finding the whole number that is below a decimal number. Ceiling is the fancy math term for finding a whole number that is above the decimal number. So we're going to pick floor and we are good. So current sector X to floor. So this will now give us a current sector X and Y. So now we just have to do a little bit of math to figure out how we go from an X and a Y. Uh, how we go from an X and a Y to a number here. So it looks to me, if it's zero, zero, uh, we're at zero. So it goes zero, one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? So, um, 
Ma, what, what am I thinking? I'm thinking that in order to go from one to the other, we have to add an x, add something in an x, and multiply something in a y, right? Because as, they, as we go down, as we go down in the y, we go up by 5. Any, any step up in the y takes us over by 5. Any step up in the x takes us over by 1, except for this step here, which does something different. So let's think about it just a tiny bit more. So, oh, I didn't want that. I wanted this. I wanted this. So we are going to set, and I think we actually are maybe already did this math, but um, we're going to do this math a little bit experimentally probably. Primarily because um, writing, yeah, this is math that I would probably normally work out. I'm going to work it on my head. I would normally work it out on a piece of scrap paper just to be more convinced that it was right. Um, but uh, so, but since scrap papers, it's not as easy to. Do that stuff on the computer screen so instead we're going to kind of do it experimentally so let's just see what our let's see what our current sector x and y are uh okay current sector y is five and our current sector x is three current sector y is five and x is three so y is five x is three um so this is going to be well, why don't we just make the numbers lower? Let's let's set our current sector to be a lower number. Um, so let's, and to do that, we have to set our unit, make our universe be a lower number. So I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna set universe y to uh, I don't know two thousand fifty six. All right. So now, if we run this, current sector Y is 2 and current sector X is 3, which is perfect. And so we can see X is 2. Oh, geez. Geez. 2, 3, 4. Um, current sector Y is, well, okay. I suddenly realized that this diagram doesn't have the same number of sectors in each dimension as our our galaxy. So, whatever. Um, um, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out whether it makes sense to redraw that diagram. I'm going to say no. Let's not redraw the diagram. Let's just think about it a little bit. So, our current sector number, it's going to be our x position. Or our current sector x. It's gonna be our current sector y plus our current sector x is something we're gonna start with. Current sector x is here. Let's go find some math. Let's grab a plus. Um, but it's not actually gonna be our current sector. Our current sector x. It's gonna be our current sector x. Uh, right. If our current sector is five. We're going to add zero to it, to our y. If our current sector is ten, right? We're still we're uh, with. All right, my brain just did something wrong. Um, yeah. So we're going to add our current sector x, and I think we're going to multiply the size of our thing by current sector y, right? So because, right, we are we are four here. Let's be in this diagram. Let's be four by. Get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Let's fill this and let's do that. Okay, great. So in this diagram, we are five by five. So if we happen to be in sector one one, we're going to take our current sector x, which is one, and we're going to add it to the to our current sector y, which is one, times the number of things we have in the x dimension. Right. So we have five in the x dimension. One, two, three, four, five. We have five. We're five across. So we're going to take that number, multiply it by where we are in the y, which is one. So five times one. That gives us five. 
and we're going to add our x, which is this, to give us 6. Right, similarly, what if we were in position 13? We would say, okay, what's our x? It's 3. What is our y? Our y is 2. We are going to take our y, which is 2. We're going to multiply it by the number of sectors we have across in our x, which is 5. So we're going to say 5 times 2. That gives us 10. We're going to add our x, which is 3, which gives us 13. So that makes sense. So what is this, the solution here? We're going to say the number of sectors across, which is a variable. I can't remember what it's called. But the number of sectors across, so we're going to multiply that times our y, our y position, and we're going to add our x position to it. So, uh, so let's see what variables we have. We have galaxy sector count x times current. Uh, what did we say? We said we're going to take that. We're going to multiply it by our y. So galaxy sector count x times current sector y. And then we're going to add our x to that. So that seems to do it. OK, so now we are going to do that. Calculate current sector. Um, so now let's hide all this stuff. And let's just do a little bit of flying around while monitoring these variables to see if they do what we think they should. Um, oh, this shouldn't be a 1,000. It should be a thousand, but it shouldn't be a thousand. It should be um, sector size, which is of course a thousand, right? But but if we change it, we want it to not. We want it to. If we change this sector size, we don't want to break this code um, and have to re go jump back in here and figure out what what a thousand is. Um, all right, just taking the time briefly. Uh, all right, 1250, looks like we have at least time to check this, test this bit here. Let's hide these giant lists. We're gonna leave these three up because we like them. Um, although let's, let's arrange them a little bit. Let's not be drawing our diagram in the background of our game. And what, what just happened over there? I can't even, I feel like I just saw a crazy, I don't even know what just happened. Okay, I don't know, that was weird. All right, we're going to go hit go. And we are in, oh, let's look at our actual universe X and Y as well. Let's monitor that as well, just so we can see all of the things that should be related to each other. So we're at 5,000, 5,000. Great. Our current sector Y is 5. Our current sector X is 5. And since we are a 10 by 10, uh, we are saying that 10 times uh, the X dimension is, or sorry, 10 times where we are, okay, the x dimension, which is 10, times our current x position, which is 5, gives us 50. Our current y position is 55. So at 0 0.5000, 5000, we are in the right place. So what if I go left? Look at that. It went down to 4. Um, if I keep going left, it should go 3. And as you see, my y isn't changing or my Y sector isn't changing because my position Y is not changing very much. Um, and now we're at zero. And of course, here's a problem. Here's a problem is that we can go into the negatives and we should not go into the negatives. Going into the negatives is going to make something weird happen. Um, it's going to put us in... What is going to the negatives going to do? I don't really know. Um, it's going to change the math of how we calculate this. If I haven't really thought through, is it just going to make everything correct? That'd be kind of neat if it just made everything correct. Um, so I'm going up and three and four. So I'm going up in the X. All right, and you can see I, I drifted a little bit in the Y. And so now I'm going to this should go up to eight. Yep, and it did. Eighty-six, because uh, we went down. So everything is, or we went up rather. Um, I think I did the diagram with y going in a different direction with one and the other, and that's okay. Uh, my sector x goes to ten, and my sector x goes to 
11, and then that's not good, because then we end up, uh, if we go, if we keep going to the right, it treats us as if we have gone down a row. Um, so we need to make sure the galaxy loops in some sensible way. But that's going to be, I haven't thought through how to do that. I'm sure it's not like completely horrible, but it's, it's like more confu it's more confusing to me at the moment without having thought about it than I kind of expected. Okay, but that all looked great. That was a great test. Everything is now working. So, that's great. So now what we need to do is um Now what we need to do is get all of our neighboring get all of our neighboring sectors. Um, so, um, I'm trying, trying to think about the right way to, to do this. Well, you know, it is 12.55. I know we started late. I know we started late. And so we didn't get to do much, but we did something. We tested it. It works. Um, I am hesitant to jump in and start working on a new feature because I feel like I'll just start rushing through it. So instead, what I think we're going to do is leave this broken. Oh, no. I forgot to do the thing again. All right. Well, save a copy. Um. We're gonna call this twelve, and we we have we have lost we've lost some data, haven't we? Um, we're gonna call it twelve. Um, calculating calculating the the ships. Oh, calculating? Nope. Calculating the ships position, the uh, galaxy position. Uh, sector. I don't know. We'll call it which sector am I in? There we go. That's a good name. So we're going to go. We did it. We're going to save now. Um, And we are going to go to our project page. We're going to just do all the things. Um, I'm gonna have to fix. I'm gonna have to fix the eleven, which I broke, unfortunately. Oh, I don't remember what those are. They might be nothing. They're probably nothing. But okay. Oh, uh, let's see. I want to be here. I need to share this one. First things first. Go in here and share. Okay, so um, we calculated which sector the player's ship is in. Ship is in, so so that we can use that number to figure out which stars to render. Um, in doing so, what happened? In doing so, we broke the star rendering completely so at the moment no stars are ever drawn i think that's true yep uh so that's fine no problems with that um this is saved and episode 12 is what it is as i said episode 11 is unfortunately broken i unfortunately broke the code here so i may have to go back and fix it um, to return it to its previous before this stream state so that you can always go to it. Um, I like to make a promise that if you are following along um, from the beginning or at home or anything else, you can always go to the folder. You can always go to the My Scratch page. Um, I am built from scratch with underscores in between on the Scratch website. You can always go to that page and go to My Stuff and pull up the code for whatever episode you uh is before the one you're about to watch and you can have that code to look at as you 
as you watch the stream. So that's my promise to you, but it's a promise I continually break because I forget to copy it before I start working. So uh, ideally, I will go back and fix that pretty soon. All right, what else do I want to do? Can I? There we go. But yeah, with that, with that, that it's 1 p.m. Um, as I said, I apologize for taking a break last week. A bunch of stuff was going on, and I just couldn't find time to do it. But I will be back um, doing this every uh, lunchtime, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Um, this week. Um, so yeah, you can catch me on Twitch live uh, weekdays, 12 to 1. I should probably write weekdays here, shouldn't I? Um, uh twitch.tv slash built from scratch with underscores in between. You can also go to the video archive on YouTube and the uh, go to the My Scratch page itself. On My Scratch page, you are welcome to and encouraged to send me a message. Um, you can remix the project. You can do anything you want. Um, and you can also send me messages, uh, questions, comments, suggestions, anything like that. I am happy to receive them and answer them. Um, otherwise, I will see you tomorrow. Bye.